Then to offshore it, a, a small Canadian company whose CEO of AIQ, which is a Canadian company, was also listed as the CEO of SCL Canada. So it's the same company. And Cambridge Analytica is between them, but it's the same company. They start doing work for Vote Leave. They start doing work nominally for B Leave, but paid by Vote Leave. And they don't even deny that anymore. Veterans for Britain shows up. DUP shows up. All for this unknown small Canadian company offering nothing of unique value. We asked them very clearly, is there some special skill that would bring them across the ocean to the far end of our country to use? No, nothing special. So that one group is coordinated. And it is my belief that you have to do a lot of questions to see how your laws were broken, but they were broken. And for this group to say, well, we didn't know, we, and that for them to put on a public display of being at odds with each other is nonsensical because the facts are they showed up at the same place to request the same services, and they offshored things. Now, they paid it, though. So that means to me that your laws at least were broken in the UK. The same thing is true now with the Russians showing up. The Russian government, with their former oil minister who's now running Luke Oil, who's supporting Alexander Kogan, and he goes in and scrapes all this data off. Now the question I'd like to ask is, how did Alexander Kogan connect with Alexander Nisk, the CEO of this organization? How did the researcher who stole this data whether he, he had no right to do it, so let's say what he did, he stole this data, suddenly it's handed over to this company that's operating for Vote Leave, Be Leave, Leave Eat, all these, it's operating for them. So he's handed the data. Do you know how those two connected? 